Statistics and Excel, binomial distribution, coin flip, random number generation. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can get to the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab, blank worksheet, so we can practice forming, formatting cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's look at the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going. We're considering a binomial distribution situation scenario of a coin flip scenario where we have a fair coin, 50% chance it lands on heads or tails. We need to define success. We're gonna say that heads is a success, tails is a fail. We will be plotting this out using our binome.dist function. We'll also look at it binome.dist.range so you can compare and contrast the use of the two. We will plot it and then we'll use a random number generator, a little bit more complex one than we've seen in prior sections found in the data and the analysis tools here. And if you don't have that, I'll show you how to open that up as well. Let's go to the blank tab to get started. So we're gonna then format the entire worksheet to start out. I'm gonna do that by selecting the triangle up top, right click and format the cells. I'm gonna go to the currency and negative numbers, red and bracketed, no dollar sign and no decimals as our starting point. We have a coin flip scenario, coin flips, I'll just call it up top. And I'm gonna make the whole thing bold as well, selecting the triangle, home tab, font group, and embolding the entire thing. All right, so what we need for a binomial type distribution is P for the probability of success for each activity. So we're gonna say this is gonna be P or the probability of success. And for a coin flipped, if it's a fair coin, we're, we're gonna say that's gonna be 0.5 typically. So I'm gonna say 50%, 0.5, home tab, number group, let's percentify that cell. And then the number of rounds, I'm gonna say number of rounds, and I'm just gonna say there'll be 12 rounds, 12 rounds. All right, so then I'm gonna make column C a little bit skinnier and plot this out. So let's plot it out. Now we'll plot this out in a similar way as we did with the prior presentation. I'm gonna say X and it's gonna be P of X. I'll make this black and white up top, selecting these two up top, home tab, font group, bucket drop down, making it black and then making it white and centering that. And so then now I'm gonna say this is gonna be numbered from uh, zero to 12 but I'm gonna use our nice sequence function to do that. So instead of going zero, one, two, and selecting those and copying down to 12, which we could do, but I would like it to be adjustable. So I'm gonna use the sequence uh, thing here. And I'm gonna try to show the pros and cons of using these spill arrays to some degrees, as well as we think about this, we'll do this two different ways. So I'm gonna say this equals the sequence, S E q sequence tab and then i'm going to say that we want the rows are going to be 12 of them plus one because i need 12 plus zero and i'm going to start at zero instead of one number of columns none so i'm going to put two commas to skip that argument the starting point will be zero closing it up and enter and you give us that nice spill format there now let's do the a second bit here which is the binome and once again i'm going to use an array kind of format so this is going to be by bi, binome uh binome dot dist so here we have the two that we have dot dist and dot range dot dist dot range the dot dist dot range is the newer of the two and so it's and it's got more flexibility but again there's kind of pros and cons to using each of them and you might 
you might pick one or the other depending on your circumstance but this is this one you should be able to use basically for all circumstances and therefore might be the default that you would want to be thinking of so we're going to say then the the number of trials is going to be 12 and then comma the probability is going to be the 50 comma and then the numbers i'm going to select this range here so i'm going to put my cursor on uh here d2 control shift down so it picks up that range i'm also going to select these two and make sure that they're absolute f4 dollar sign before the b and the four this one f4 dollar sign bef between the b and the four or before the b and the three and then enter so then it spills down. So now we've got these arrays here. If I select this item, home tab, number group, percentify it, and add some decimals, there we have it. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here uh, and not use the arrays. One of the downfalls or, or pitfalls of using an array, by the way, is it's a little bit more difficult to say insert a table. If I wanna go insert and put a table, then you know, it's not picking, see how it didn't pick the entire area that it normally would if there were not arrays here. And if I close this up and I try to say, I want this whole thing in a table, insert table and okay, it messes up the spills. Uh, so sometimes, so, so you gotta be a little bit careful when you're working with the tables. The other thing is that it doesn't have a formula down here. It only has a formula in that top cell, which could be a pro or a con. But let's do the same thing. I'm gonna copy this down here and do, the, do it without an array. So let's copy that. Let's give us a, some space and I'll put it down here to see the two methods you might use. I'm gonna have the same headers. This equals the X and then copying that to the right for the F of X, home tab, font group, black, white, centering it. So now I could use the standard, the good old method of just saying zero, one, two, selecting those three, copying it down with the fill handle. And then I'll use the other uh, binome function. So it equals binome, uh, binome dot dist, but not the range this time. So binome dot dist, double clicking it, so now we've got uh, the numbers, which I'm gonna pick up this one. And note the order of, of the arguments are a little bit different. So I'm gonna say comma, and then the trials that we're gonna have will be 12. And then I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard to make that absolute because I'm gonna copy it down. And then comma, the probability is gonna be 50% F4 on the keyboard because I'm going to be copying it down and then comma and you'll note it's got this cumulative uh, argument. Now the cumulative argument is the same thing or something we saw with the Poisson distribution where it's saying that if you pick false then you're not going to have a cumulative up to a certain point uh, whereas if you pick true it'll try to do the cumulative up to uh, up to the point, up to that certain point. We want it not to be cumulative, so we can type in false, or we can put a zero here, which will also say false. That's telling it false and enter. I'm gonna put my cursor on it and then double click the fill handle. That should copy it down. And then we'll percentify it and add a couple decimals. Now with this second one, note that the, what we can do here is, is insert a table because we didn't use the spill functions in any spill uh, function. So I can go to the insert and if my cursor is in here, I can make a table from it and insert the table and there we have it. And the tables can be nice sometimes.